All right, as I mentioned, today is Super Tuesday when uh, 14 states, one territory, hold GOP presidential primary contest and more than a third of all the available delegates for the Republican nomination are at stake. California, Texas, North Carolina, Virginia, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Colorado, Tennessee, Iowa, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Utah. And by the way, if you live in one of those states and you've not yet voted, you need to go vote. You still have time. Now, these votes come on the heels of yesterday's Supreme Court decision that former President Donald Trump can remain on individual state primary ballots, an overwhelming rebuke of the lapse of attempt at lawfare in subverting the will of the people. Well, today's results could shift the political landscape of Washington, D.C. Joining me now to discuss this, Senator Mike Braun. He uh, is from Indiana. He serves on four Senate committees, including the Senate Budget Committee, uh, and uh, he's tracking very, very closely these budget bills that are making their way through Congress. Senator Braun, welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to see you. Hey, good to be back on. So before we jump into the budget battle that is raging on Capitol Hill, let's talk about Super Tuesday. Why should conservatives get out and vote today before the polls close? Well, so much uh, rides on this, and I think we can put... Uh, everything basically to rest uh, this evening. So get out, take nothing for granted. Um, I come uh, from that uh, arena that thinks this place has got to be fixed drastically. Um, the whole issues with budget, an open border, uh, a sugar high economy that uh, they try to call Bidenomics and make us feel that that's really working. Um, so much to litigate. And Tony, I think sometimes we as Republicans just don't do it well enough. So the place to start is get out and vote uh, with the time you got left today. And I think that'll at least get the political kind of uh, uh, momentum directly headed where it needs to go. And, and Senator, Washington takes notice of people turning out to vote. And, you know, while these are just primary elections, it matters because people are watching the trends uh, in Washington, D.C., watching the trends of where American voters are headed. No doubt about it. And uh, I think here, when you have so many in the same day, uh, it then gives us the ability to coalesce and go after where the main focus ought to be is on the other side of the aisle, that Tony treats this place as its kind of growth business and cathedral wrapped into one. If you really want to understand why they are so, uh, so resistant to reforming anything and doing anything along the lines of sustainability, going back where the founders intended this place to be, uh, that then messes with their entity. And we've got to change that. The good news is over the last, since I came in in 18, uh, a few senators and I calculated that 15 of the last 17 senators lean in that direction. Once we get to over 25 comfortably, then in our own conference we can do things with a different direction and then hopefully turn the country into the right direction. So, Senator, let's talk about where those conservative senators are going to lean this week when it comes to the spending package. The, the House and Senate leaders unveiled, uh, uh, I guess it was Sunday night, a $467.5 billion spending package. These are six bills that have been kind of lumped together. Has to pass yeah. by Friday to avert a partial government shutdown. But this is getting mixed up into, and I think this is a good thing, frankly, uh, into the election of the next Republican leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell saying he's going to step down. Now this is going to test the mettle of those that might step into that uh, leadership role. How is this going to work out? Well, sadly, it's going to appear like we've done some real belt tightening. But this is on the heels of, since Biden has been elected, in many cases, 10 to 15 Republicans going along with the spending bills that, uh, yes, uh, I think defense is the most important thing we do as a country. It's a thing the federal government has to do. I believe it should be held accountable through budgets and audits. And that, I think, gets uh, addressed 
um, in a, a different way. These are the six spending bills that constitute about half of what we spend. And you're gonna see that it's gonna be bragged about because it's not going up eight to 10% like it has in recent years. And by the way, this should have been done by September 30th of last year with real budget meetings, but the budget meetings don't occur anymore, not even with a resolution. So even if you hear like some type of fake austerity, this is on the heels of three years of taking our federal government to over 25% of our GDP. It's never been over 20. And Tony, where we're borrowing a trillion dollars every six months. It was annually when I got here five years ago. So this is still at record levels of spending and we're gonna have record deficits as far out as you can see due to it. So Senator, is this business as usual? It is sadly, because the people that have been here so long, uh, they only uh, come to grips with these issues mostly when you're forced to because it's beyond the pale it'd be like our border uh, which uh, that was at its best place pre-biden and he undid everything through executive orders on the same legislative template that trump had to take it to where it was real border control and enforcement that's the spin that comes from dc it works there because they think they can get by with it it works on the numbers because they have always gotten by with it. Sooner or later, that is going to be a hard landing as well. Uh, Senator Braun, the, the spending bill is filled with earmarks, uh, yes. clear examples of the left's abusing must-pass legislation to advance their goals. I mean, $1 million for an LGBT center in Philadelphia that hosts sex parties and drag shows for uh, minors. I mean, this is uh, this is not good stuff. I mean, and, and where's the border security? I mean, where wh where is the reining in of the the DEI of the, the government? Where is, uh, you know, where where is any conservative elements? Yeah, where is our voice backed up with some real dollars? And what's really sad there is I've tried to introduce a bill and there'd be several others to get rid of earmarks legislatively. And then it was like two, three years ago, our own House Republicans brought them back. And then it is against the Senate conference's desire that any lone Republican senator can, you know, uh, eat out of the trough. And, you know, it's symbolic of a broken system again, Tony. It's only billions used to be significant dollars. Now it's chump change to the big spenders but it's what it represents. If you can't at least get rid of that, how are you going to ever start spending less than we take in yeah. borrowing from future generations? It's, it's bad optics. So back to where we started, Senator, elections matter. And yeah. this is a message to conservatives, don't give up. We're close to a tipping point. Is that what you said? We just got to keep voting and get those conservative constitutionally minded senators where we can hold the line on this spending we do and you know some so much of what we talked about seems pretty dismal but in those five little over five years i can see that we've made progress on changing the composition of the republican senate caucus yeah. in other words going more to faith family freedom don't borrow money from your kids and grandkids what could be simpler if you're a conservative and we need to keep like tonight is the beginning of then in 24 we do well uh, on the senate races 26 and 28 then we're there inch by inch we just got to keep uh, got keep at it senator Always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us. My pleasure.